Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another film. A little bit different this evening. I'm out doing some landscape photography, not nature photography, and I've nipped out to a local spot that I've made a couple of videos on in the past, and I've been watching the weather today, which I'll talk more about when I get to my location, um, and that's why I'm where I am today. Now, for those of you that have not watched the videos from this location, this is a, a huge expanse of salt marsh in all directions and this floods at various times of year depending on the tide height and the salt marsh as you might expect is filled with lots and lots of channels and it's one of those channels that I've come to photograph today and I'm actually searching for a good one right now the thing is with the channels is that whilst I know there are a number of them that I like the shape of you can never predict what the water level is going to be like in them. Some of them are completely cut off by the estuary and some of them are, are linked. So the ones that are linked tend to empty quite quickly. The ones that, um, that, that aren't can fill if we've had a good tide or if we've had a bit of rainfall, but equally they can empty very, very quickly if it dries um, or, or as the tide recedes. And depending on the weather, of course, de depends on how long the water stays in those pools. So it's not something you can really um, predict to a high level. You've, you've literally got to come on the day and, and see if the pool that you've got in mind is filled. Now, today, um, I only decided really rather last minute, and I'll explain again, like I say, about the weather and the reason I'm here. Um, so I haven't had a chance to do a recce. I've had a quick look on, on Google Images and I've seen a pool and I've seen it in the distance from the banking behind me and uh, I know that there's water in it but I, I need to look at the angle of it because that's another factor the angle of the pool in relation to where the sun's setting is also crucial ideally I don't want to be looking directly at the sun I want to be looking off to off to probably um, 45 degrees to one side and I can catch the colour in the sky and not be have too much problems with them um, with the setting sun directly into the lens so the, the angle of the channel is important now with these channels obviously like I said some are linked to the sea and this one here which I'm about to cross a uh, nice easy step there is um, takes me roughly to where I want to be um, a bit further over in that direction but because these are linked to the sea and already I can see there's a little bit of water movement so I've got to be very very careful that I don't get cut off because what I really don't want to be doing is trying to uh, locate a good crossing point when this is filled with water um, I'm going to check my um, my Google map in a second just to see because I can see like I said the water's dribbling in a, in a direction there but I don't know whether that's still going out or whether that's coming in. Um, I suspect it's potentially coming in because the tide tonight is um, an incoming tide, but it's only three meters. So that may well be as high as it gets. Um, so, but I've got to really keep my eye on it. These are dangerous places and, uh, and you've got to know them well. I'm not that far from the end. The banking is literally just there and I'm not going to go much further. The sheep um, grazing, spin you around. The sheep grazing, they're on the, the edge of the estuary. Now, sheep don't like getting wet, getting wet any more than I do, so I'll keep my eye on those, and um, hopefully everything will go to plan. So let me just jump across this. Oh, gosh, that's not easy with a big pack on, and uh, get to where I need to be. So I've got to one of the pools, and this is the problem that I'm up against that I don't really like. So this pool has obviously been filled with water for quite some time. And I'll show you, I'm looking for a pool that's got nice potential reflections in it. And as you can see, there's a, a frothy scum on the surface that I'm not overly keen on, but a lovely shape and um, potentially would have made a nice foreground. If I move back, you see there's some quite nice shaping and it forms a nice bit of foreground but uh, I'll bear it in mind as a potential but um, I really want a nice reflected sky because that's what the predictions are for tonight for a good a good sky that's the reason I'm here 
so I'll uh, keep looking around and see if I can find another one right so I think I've found something I'm happy with I am definitely going to scrap the one that I saw over there the one that I've now found and I just moved back there is some scum in the water um, as you can see but it doesn't go forward to where I want to shoot which is this pool here and I'm going to use this right hand side I think as my lead in line and uh, we'll be looking at something along the lines of that for a composition I quite like that so um, like I say I'm not going to spend any longer looking because time is of the essence with something like this and uh, at least now I'm here I know that just over over here there is one of the inlet channels and it's not so far away that should I need to check what's do what's happening with the uh, with the tide I can come and have a quick look at this so I'm pretty safe and I've got my friends here the sheep company although they're, they're, there's I speak they're heading that way and I'm not sure if they're, they're heading that way because they, they know something I don't or whether they think that I'm potentially going to give them something to eat um, I need to go this way and uh, but that's, that's certainly not going to happen so I'll get the camera out and uh, get into position and play the waiting game so I'm all set up and ready to go I've got my 28 to 45 on at the moment in time I haven't got any polarizer on I haven't got any grads on I'm just waiting to see um, what the light does before I make any of those decisions I'm on the opposite side of the pool to what I, I initially showed you the reason for that is it, it soon became apparent that the Sun is setting directly in front and I don't want that I want to be looking to the left um, of the sun so I can catch the colours and not, not have too much problems with, with direct light coming um, directly into the lens. I don't really want that. I want some nice reflected light. This is the plan in the, in the, in the pool and uh, beautiful pink sky above. It's a big ask but um, all you can do is just plan these things as best you can. Now today I was watching the weather forecast all day and I've been looking at the satellite imagery and um, watching the clouds um, as the predicted to move over this part of the country which is in Lancashire now as you can see there's lots of cloud above me and where the Sun's going down there's equally lots of cloud although on the horizon there's a few breaks the prediction is is that this cloud above is going to dissolve around about nine o'clock sunset is at half past eight I'm hoping that that's slightly wrong and that cloud dissolves um, a little bit beforehand um, not too much because what I don't want is I, I don't I don't want the clouds to disappear completely because I want that under lighting effect that you get as the Sun's just dipping below the horizon um, the satellite imagery shows this whole area at nine o'clock to be absolutely clear of clouds so it should happen I say it should um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed um, over to my left which I'll show you now it's already quite clear so it, it's it's panning out to be as they said it would but um, you know what clouds are like sometimes they can be stubborn they can they can move quicker than you expect and they can also just stay exactly where they are so I'm happy with this composition it's now just a case of waiting I'll talk you through the composition there's one or two bits and bobs I just want to mention before we start waiting for those clouds to move so I'll, I'll talk you through that now so there's the composition what I've done is I've put the video camera behind um, the photographic camera just so that you can see um, exactly what I'm getting with the wide angle lens the, the video camera hasn't got sufficiently wide view to put it directly at the side of, of the stills camera so I've had to move that back but it's I think it's good because you can see the back of the camera as well so what I've done is I've placed the composition so I've got this is my left hand anchor a little bit of space to that left hand side and then over here of course is my right hand anchor and there's just a little bit of grass um, off to one side just to help frame the shape of the water really really nice shapes and the channel on the lower left just just helps to bring the eye into that split of water 
what I'm going to do now, which seems crazy, is that all around here, and this could be easily done with a clone tool, but I'm going to remove some of them. There are feathers from, uh, from mute swans um, that, that have just been plucked out as they've been preening, walking across the marsh. And um, I don't mind cloning, but uh, it's nice to get it right in camera um, as much as possible. So I'm going to pick some of these out and uh, get rid of them. And then I don't have to worry about that <laughs> later on, ending up in the water now. But the thing is, what you've got to bear in mind is that if you've got an image that's absolutely fantastic and it's a lifetime image, and I'm not saying this is going to be one of those, when you enter one of the major competitions, they ask to see the raw file. And the only thing that's allowed in most competitions, unless you've got, unless they allow manipulation or you enter that particular category, is they will only allow you to clone out dust spots. And um, so things like this, um, if you were to clone these out, would be unacceptable. So I try to get it right if I can. And then if I get that wonderful image that is really one of my top drawers, let's say one of those once every blue moon images, you probably get two or three a year if, if you're lucky on a good year, then I know that I can enter this image into whatever competition that I like. So I will spend another few minutes picking these up. Quite a lot of them. Um, here we go. So there, as you can see, oh God, I'm dropping them. <laughs> That's what you get for trying to show you. Just a cluster of downy feathers. So I'll discard, there's, there's quite a lot of them just on the other side, but I want to check through the camera and um, hopefully you'll not see most of them as they get further and further away. But there's probably another five minutes work. And my watch has just said, uh, you can see that half an hour to sunset so there's a little bit of colour already starting to appear in the clouds above so I need to get my skates on. So the time is quarter past eight and there is some movement, it is thinning ever so slightly and over to the right hand side where the sun's setting there is a glimmer um, of hope, there's one or two gaps and uh, it is colouring up, um, the, low, the lower atmosphere clouds are colouring up over there. These low clouds that are above me are quite heavy and they're going to take some shifting but um, fingers crossed um, I'll, pull it, I'll pull it off. I'm going to stick my neck out anyway, I'm going to put this shot on regardless. Um, because it's just it's how it is with landscape photography it's a waiting game and all the planning like I said earlier um, you can do a lot of it and uh, a lot of predicting at the end of the day it's down to that last half hour whether you pull it off or not so I will put the results of this evening's shoot on regardless at the moment the sky at the back of the camera is um, a lovely steely blue colour it really looks nice with the green and you've got the nice reflection in the water as well which is reflecting that lovely blue blue bluey grey steely blue sky in the water surface so I quite like that. What I have done is I've put a 0 0.6 neutral density filter on um, it's a lovely straight horizon line so there's no no problems with undulating mountains and like I said earlier with the feathers if you want to submit that lifetime image into a big competition the chances are they probably won't accept uh, a digital graduated filter some will some won't so I always try to get it get it right when I'm when I'm out on location it's I love this sort of photography because it's it's the anticipation's building the excitement's building and and it could all go horribly wrong but um being out is just is just wonderful anyway it's so still out here and it always is it's lovely out on the marsh at any time of year but unlike the the more intimate scenes that I do I've got a lot more control over those and, and nine times out of ten I get what I'm after but um, this what I'm after tonight is that lovely pink sky but 
I have no way of controlling that. It, it really is just down to what happens. But uh, enjoying being out here anyway, it's lovely, really nice. sky looks amazing it's always lovely big skies out here and I, i'm always happy when i when i come onto the marsh it's just big vast expanse of open land and the, the sky just looks so impressive and it's clearing it's clearing above me right now and we've eight minutes to sunset and just in the mid ground between the horizon line and above me there's some color just starting the sky and the distant clouds are starting to colour up getting quite excited now but it could all be snuffed out in an instant just so you just so you know um, I'm currently on 100 ISO f14 and this is a three second exposure so not that that matters on a nice sturdy platform here my new tripod my new King Joy tripod um, lovely piece of kit very happy with it uh, spike feet never had spike feet before but uh, I really do like them and uh, certainly recommend them come on you can do it I'm going to take a couple now just to get those bankers in just in case um, the light does snuff out and it starts going downhill from this point so I'm going to focus there about a third of the way in And that's one in the bag it's not a very dramatic sky I think it actually looks better much better through that video camera because the sky over there is really quite dramatic not so much where I'm pointing uh, at the moment there's that temptation now to move and shift over there do I ha do I stick it out or do I stay here but I'll get these bankers in um, as, as the sun is setting and we're getting more towards that that crucial moment and then when it does come to it i'll have i'll be able to choose the one that i like the most so i'll take another one just make sure that focus is nice and sharp yeah about there i'd say So I've shifted my position ever so quickly because I don't want to miss this. Look at the sun, um, that beautiful orange glow, and I've come to my original position. And weirdly, my composition, I don't know whether you can see it, it looks like a cat. Got a leg here, a leg here, got the head, and there's a little tussock of grass, which looks like the eye of the cat. Now, annoyingly, I can't get the tail in, but uh, it does look like a cat light on its left-hand side. That's amazing. That sky is just beautiful. Forgive me if the commentary goes a bit airwall for, for a minute. I've got to get this. That's lovely. So I think as the sun goes down, my plan is actually to move back to my original spot. If it happens, it literally is two seconds, well, say two seconds, it's probably 15 seconds to get back over there and set, set back up. Um, too good to miss, I've not had to move too far away. So um, if it happens as I, as I originally planned it to over there, I'll move back to my original position. But for now, I'm gonna work with this. And then at least I've got something nice to go on with like I say just taking images as the evening's progressing because there will be a point at which it will start to go the other way and it won't be as good there'll be a, a crescendo of color and we might actually be at it right now and I don't want to miss that crucial um, moment at all it's 
really lovely starting to color up on the left hand side now the drama in those right hand clouds is moving over and um, the sky is parting above as was predicted I was just wondering if I can move back towards you and get the tail of the cat in as I'm calling it um, I need to get higher because as I've moved back the um, the, the shape of the pool isn't as prominent so I need to get higher now and I can fit it in just about get really high up so I've lifted the camera up so that I can see the shape of the cat I can now get its paw in and I can also get its tail in and I'll put all these on at the end there'll be a couple I think focus that up some lovely underlit clouds in the distance I mean they, they look a lot more prominent to the naked eye because this wide angle lens is making them sort of recede into the distance so they're not as strong but what I am getting is I'm getting the, the cloudscape above really nice and I'm just Underexposing, just keep exposing to the left, just to, just so that I don't clip the shadows. And I'm trying various focusing points, just so that I know that that f14 is going to be right at some point. I don't want a focus stack, I really don't. I could take one for the foreground and one for the background, but I'm trying to get this in one go. So what I'm doing is I am changing the focusing points and hopefully I will get one that will cover front to back sharpness at f14 I will take one at 16 there 16 is about the limit for this particular camera before I start getting um, problems with diffraction so that's not bad about there some lovely lovely sky I almost I almost didn't come tonight I'm so glad I did I think it's peaked I do think it's peaked as I've been concentrating on taking those shots at the end of them I looked up and it's definitely um, gone past its best and that's what I mean about taking them all the way through the period of of that sun going down then you know you're gonna you're gonna get at least one that's that's right there's no absolutely no point in standing here watching it and waiting for it to um, to get at its best because chances are suddenly it just goes and you've missed it so if, if nothing else happens now I know that I've got I've got something in the bag now it's it's 8.32 sunset was at half past eight so that really corresponds with that that color um, disappearing now what can happen that I'm going to hang around for is that the the high atmosphere clouds might just catch as the Sun gets further down definitely don't go home until until that that period has ended it's normally about 20 minutes half an hour after the sunset before you can consider it the show over and you can pack up and go home but I'm so glad I moved positions I really am glad I hung on and hung on and I uh, just got that feeling that it wasn't going to happen it gets right to the wire and, and you can sort of predict then what's going to happen and that's what I did and uh, it, was, it was the right call to move over to the left hand side I don't think the composition is as strong here as, as it is over there but that's definitely definitely snuffed out now really interesting to watch you never get tired of watching the setting sun and how it plays on the landscape so that's it it is now nine o'clock that secondary light show definitely isn't going to happen I've nearly lost all the light um, it's nine o'clock and there's the last glimmer of gold on the horizon there look at that beautiful sky absolutely stunning the skies on these big open um, 
grassy salt marshes really beautiful and spectacular so turn you around so you can see me in the last little bit of light i'm going to leave it there um thank you all so much for watching it's been a really good one tonight it was one of those racing around trying to get the image that excitement building i hope you've enjoyed watching uh, that in virtually in real time i haven't skipped much at all this evening um, i'll put the images on now so leave some comments below let me let me know what you think of those and uh, if you're not already a subscriber and you've enjoyed what you see um, i do other stuff as well woodland intimate scenes and uh, doing a few more landscapes this last couple of weeks bigger landscapes so like i said subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and ring the bell for notifications so until next time thank you all so much for watching i will see you in the next one bye for now